Jen Lovitz from SpellbindingBusinessSchool.com and today I wanted to talk to you about uh, physical products, specifically physical products that you, <laughs> you, you, me, um, you as an individual, you as a business owner did not create yourself. So this could actually be a product or a program that is someone else's creation. And here's a different way of thinking about this particular piece. If you work in products, let's say products from a direct selling company or an MLM, it's a product that you did not create, but it's a product that when people purchase with your specific link or information, um, that company is paying you a commission. That is the exact same thing as most affiliate marketing connections. So an affiliate marketing relationship may happen when two business owners go, hey, you have a thing that you put out that I really love that my people, my ideal clients would really love too. If I tell them about your thing, will you compensate me in some way? That's really what an affiliate association is all about. Hey, I've got a product or program that serves these people and, oh, that's cool. Um, my people could use that thing. And there's some kind of an exchange, energetic exchange for one person providing traffic, um, the other handles the conversion and there is usually um, a financial exchange. Usually someone pays you for sending your traffic to their company. We've, I, we probably, we should have at this point talked about the fact that sales comes from sending traffic to offers. That's where money is created traffic with offers. So this is just a different form of traffic. There's three forms of traffic, organic traffic, paid traffic, and affiliate traffic. And not all affiliate traffic actually comes back to the person who shared in the form of money. Sometimes it comes in the form of karma. Goodwill leads to something else, right? But when I'm talking about this mindset shift about product-based businesses, direct sales businesses, I want you to just realize that what, how you're showing up as the distributor of whatever product it may be, um, you're really an affiliate for this bigger company. Now they're calling you an independent consultant or distributor or whatever piece, and they're providing compensation and prizes and, and all of these other pieces, if you're part of an MLM or a um, direct selling company, there's these other pieces that shift the relationship a little bit more. They may have contracts that say you cannot rep for other companies um, and, and other, other pieces. And they may make you feel like you are an employee even though they don't pay you in that way and like the, the tax relationship um, is independent contractor. It's their product, so they control the restrictions. They say, yes, you can do this, no, you can't do that, because ultimately whatever you do, even as an independent co uh, contractor or consultant, um, is a direct reflection on them. And if you tell a lie, that company can get in trouble as well as you. Uh, that's why we've had within the um, essential oil space specifically, there's been a lot of conversations about what's compliant and what's not because people were making claims that were not approved by the FDA and the parent companies were getting into trouble by some of these claims and conversations. And there was a mass bit of um, education that was passed through all of the downlines of you can say this, you can't say this um, within that world because of that, that place. 
they controlled the parent company, the person, the company that supplied the oil um, was the one that was on the hook for what was being said by their distributors. So I want you to just think about um, think about this whole process differently. While the main company, your parent company, has done a ton of the heavy lifting for you, they've already identified who their ideal client is and what tools or products that ideal client needs. And they've created some marketing materials to help you promote to them there's likely within that um, within that information, it's likely much broader than what you as an individual may wish to create and serve. You likely have a more niched market, a more specific ideal client profile, even if you work within this bigger company. Um, I was a Pampered Chef consultant for a good six years, I believe it was. And Pampered Chef is all about bringing food to the table and making um, meal times more um, more readily available. Let's help get people cooking together and eat and sharing meals together. Broadly, it's been a while, like um, more than 10 years um, conversation. But within that, um, one of my niches was that I was working with people in my local area. That is one way in which I was niched down because I wasn't doing parties across the country. Um, Facebook was not a, a big platform for people to use in order to host virtual parties. Um, if you were having a catalog show, you really were shipping a catalog to your grandmother across the country or in another state. Um, you weren't saying, hey, go to this website and order. Um, things have massively changed in that time period. But at the time, like, oh, well, I'm only doing cooking shows in this specific region. So there's part of my niche. Um, there are a number of consultants that their, their niche was more directly tied to families. Um, I really only want to work with, with people that have kids. Or maybe they said um, with some of the other product lines, um, really I want to work with people who want to do more entertaining. And so then your shows were about entertaining and, and those pieces or one pot meals or like whatever those niches were. This was a niche. It was a smaller piece of the bigger pie of the bigger ideal client profile. Um, there really were like sub profiles that were available to me as a consultant and are available to you if you are a consultant for any of these companies. Um, so get specific, know who it is that I'm working with. This is the, this is the piece. And going back to what's the transformation, what's the result that people are going to get from using this particular product? We talk about it, I talk about it with your own business and needing to have this clarity, but it also applies when you're going to, to do an affiliate launch. If you've worked with somebody and you absolutely love and adore them as a coach um, and you wanna refer other people to them, you, you as the person that's going to be sending people their way, need to be very specific about who it is that you're wanting to send. What are the, what's the transformation that you've experienced that you see that they can receive when they work with you? Um, all of these pieces just really play in together. Going back to these, the seven questions, the who do you serve? Uh, what is the transformation? Why do you do what you do to form that marketing message? And in this case, your offer of like, how am I doing it? And uh, which business model are we using? And um, where am I working with my clients? A lot of that pieces, those three pieces for the offer have already been figured out for you because you're promoting someone else's thing. You already know the business model that they're offering it in. If it's a multi-level marketing, that's the business model. Affiliate marketing, 
That's the business model. Um, and when you have the clarity on all these pieces, you've got the traffic and the offer coming together with the marketing message and producing income. So that's it for today. I just really wanted to have this conversation about this shift in looking at um, MLMs and um, products that are sold through the DSA and how they're very similar to traditional um, or more traditional affiliate marketing things. That's it guys. Have an amazing day. And if you have questions, uh, shoot me an email. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.